Um, second is the power supply to the building. This is Governor um, as Christie you know, it's speaking. Ener it's energized tracks there. Uh, <clears throat> as soon as this happened, if you've seen the way the damage operated, there were wires everywhere. Um, Port Authority police, transit police made the decision to immediately cut power to that part of the building to ensure the safety of the people who were there. Uh, that was the right decision. And so we have to determine when it would be available to restore power to those areas. So there's a number of different aspects of this that have to be looked at by our engineers. Governor Cuomo's pledged the full support of the Port Authority along with me to have their engineers working with transit engineers to deal with what we need to deal with here. The good news for some of our commuters who use PATH is that this will not affect PATH service at all, uh, and they'll be able to continue to use the Hoboken Terminal for PATH service. The structural integrity of those places um, are fine. So um, I think the governor and I both feel the same way. The, the most important thing is the structural safety of that building and the safety of the people that were there. Remember, the one fatality we did have was not someone on the train, but someone who was killed by debris uh, that was created uh, while they were standing on the platform uh, from the crash. And so we need to make sure that the entire portion of that building is safe from a power perspective and a structural perspective so that we don't have any unintended injuries going forward. So that'll be our first priority. When we determine that it's safe, we'll reopen the building, but we won't reopen it a minute earlier. And follow, want to follow up? Follow up? I'm following up with him, please. Thank you. As far as all of this damage, even to use of the tracks without the terminal, you're saying it would probably be several days? Uh, Can't tell you, Brian. You know, um, I'm not, not going to be overnight. Uh, it will be closed today. That much I can firmly tell you. Beyond that, as you know, um, I have many skills. Engineering is not one of them. No, uh, no, no, it's true. No, it is not. Engineering is not one. I'm going to leave this this one to the engineers. And unless Cuomo has some training that he hasn't revealed to me yet, I think we'll both leave it to the engineers. Yeah. Yes, sir. Engineer, and is it possible this might have been some sort of a medical emergency? What do we know about why this happened? We don't know a lot about why it happened. Um, the engineer is fully cooperating with law enforcement in the investigation. And as I said in, in my opening statement, um, I learned a long time ago as U.S. Attorney, as I know the governor did as Attorney General, uh, you don't jump to conclusions, you let the facts lead you to those conclusions. And so we have nothing really to add to that. The one thing, as Governor Cuomo mentioned, that we know is that the train came in at much too high a rate of speed. And the question is, why is that? And we won't know that for some time. As soon as we know, you can be sure we'll share it with the public. But it's not appropriate not appropriate at this time. No, I don't. And it's not appropriate for us to comment beyond that at this time. Let's let law enforcement do their job. Governor, the most serious injuries Governor, out David, of the train. David, Governor, David. Governor, David. 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 Governor, could you talk about positive train control? Where are we with that in New Jersey? And could this have possibly prevented this from taking place? Again, David, that's speculation based that can only be based upon the cause of the accident. And until we know the cause of the accident, we're not going to be able to know what steps we could take in the future to avoid an accident like this. So um, what I will tell people is, is, is pretty clear, that the commitment of New Jersey Transit, their first priority is to passenger safety. And so if there are measures that are recommended based upon the facts that are revealed for the cause of this accident, then New Jersey Transit will work to implement those and we will share those things with our partners at the MTA to make sure that passengers in New York and New Jersey who are commuting over this river, under this river every day, are kept as safe as possible. Okay, yeah. Can I just, the, uh, there's no real point as to speculating what happened uh, why did the train come in so fast? Uh, was there a medical condition? Uh, what happened with the conductor, etc.? We have no idea. Uh, and I don't think the speculation is especially helpful. The NTSB will come up. They will do full investigation. You'll have the facts. Once we have the facts, if there is a lesson to learn, we will learn it. Uh, but positive train control, etc. Until you know what caused the problem, you don't know the solution. And as Governor Christie said, uh, let the facts, let's find out the facts first, and then let's follow the facts. Uh, first order of business as to helping the, com the commuters tonight, tomorrow, the next day, um, the, you will never have had a more coordinated approach between the MTA, New Jersey Transit, Port Authority, all agencies are working together. We're sharing personnel. 
We're sharing uh, equipment and resources in a way we have never done before. Uh, this regional collaboration is only getting stronger and uh, we want all commuters to know we will have the system up and running as fast as humanly possible. Some people are nervous, Governor. What would you say to yes. those people who are nervous? We, we can't, listen, we're not going to speak to any specifics regarding the one fatality. Uh, we want to make sure that all next of kin are appropriately notified, and this would not be an appropriate notification. So we're not going to speak to that, um, except to let you know that uh, we are in the process of making sure that the victim's families are notified and handled in a dignified and appropriate manner. And beyond that, it would be it would be just wrong for us to comment on it. Were most of the serious injuries in the train or the station? Four cars, one engine. Four cars, one engine, engine in the back. Were most of the... NJ Transit will release that information as appropriate. We're not releasing it at the moment while we're in the middle of a pending investigation. Were most of the injuries in the train or in the station? Now, it, it, it took out, there's, a, there's an old style, as you know, we've been in there, an old style um, ceiling uh that's in that portion of the train station it took out a number of the um of the supporting structures for that ceiling the ceiling in that area collapsed and it came to a stop at the wall um that leads into the terminal uh, we have no indication that this is anything other than a tragic accident but as governor cuomo has said and i've said we're going to let the law enforcement professionals pursue the facts. The folks from NTSB and the Federal Railway Administration, they're working in coordination with our state attorney general, Attorney General Perino, and our state police to gather all the facts, and then they'll brief us appropriately when they come to conclusions. You said you're going to the White House. What have they said to uh, you? Uh, from eyewitness accounts. Don't. Um, you know, the investigation takes as long as it's going to take to come to an appropriate conclusion. Uh, but I can say this. We have some of the best professionals in the Port Authority, in MTA and New Jersey Transit, um, anywhere in the world on mass transportation. And so I have a great deal of confidence in them and our law enforcement officers to uh, come to a conclusion as quickly as any force of people could come to a conclusion. Most of the injuries were in the train. You said you've spoken to the White House, Governor. What have they said to you? Again, we don't know because we don't know what the cause of the high rate of speed. Again, I heard what you, no, no, listen. You speak English, I speak English. I heard what you said. Now you let me answer, and that's the way the system works. The, the fact is that we don't know what the cause of the high rate of speed was. Therefore, we cannot answer the question as to whether any other apparatus or systems could have slowed the train down or not based on that. So we're not going to speculate on that. And I appreciate your question. You've said you've spoken to the White House, Governor. What have they told you and advised you? The White House just offered their condolences for the victim um, and for their prayers for the survivors and uh, made sure that the NTSB and the FRA were coordinating with law enforcement here and offered any further assets that we, the governor and I, deemed necessary to deal with the problem. It was a brief conversation, but the White House offered their full cooperation, and, and I thank them for reaching out and offering that cooperation. And in terms of the exact speed of the train, you said that the... I don't know the total number on the train. There were 108 injured uh, and one fatality, as we said before. Well, they vary. Some were people who were able to walk in and some who were taken by New Jersey Transit bus to a hospital, graded up to those who were removed by ambulance. So there's a varying degree of them. Right now, we don't have any reason to believe that there'll be any further fatalities. But again, that's going to be things that are determined by the care and treatment that are given at the hospital and the severity of the injuries as they came in. But uh, right now, the only fatality we have is the one that we mentioned already. Well, look, the positive train control system, uh, no doubt, can be a benefit, depending on the circumstances. Uh, and what we're saying here is we don't know what the circumstances were that caused the train to continue at that rate of speed. Uh, it could be any number of things. 
Uh, it could be personal to the conductor. It could be an equipment failure. It could be anything. We have no idea. So before we start to prescribe what could be a solution, you really have to define the problem. You won't have the problem defined until after the uh, investigation. I know human nature says, how did this happen? We want to know, and we want to know now. Uh, unfortunately, we won't know today. We won't know until the investigation runs its course. But the train did come in at a high rate of speed. Uh, when you see the damage, uh, if anything, I think uh, the silver lining is that there was only one fatality, really was a blessing. And as soon as we have the facts and we know how it happened, if we can come up with a reform and improvement that makes sure it doesn't happen again, uh, that's exactly what we'll do. In the meantime, we're cooperating on the investigation, we're cooperating on the reconstruction, we're cooperating on expediting uh, the co commute for tonight and for tomorrow morning and whatever we need to do the next day by pooling all of our resources, uh, whether they be New York resources or New Jersey resources uh, or Port Authority resources, because we want to make sure we're doing everything we can for the commuter. Do we know an exact now, speed let of me, train? Let me just add, let me just add in, this is what Governor Cole said, so people can feel assured by this, not just by our words, but by our actions. The fact is that over the last six years that Governor Cuomo and I have served in these positions together, we've gone through Hurricane Irene, Hurricane Sandy, and a number of terrorist attacks. Um, what that's done for our relationship and for the relationships of our staffs has been these folks know how to deal with a crisis. Uh, that's why the first call that I received this morning after getting the call from my staff about this accident was from Governor Cuomo, who was preparing to go to Israel and canceled his trip in order to be here to help manage this crisis uh, with me. So what the people of the region need to be assured of is, I do not remember a time in the history of the state when I've been observing it, when you've had a better and more tested relationship between the governor of New York and the governor of New Jersey and their respective staffs. And so when we say we're going to get this up and running as quickly as possible, people have a track record to watch from Irene, from Sandy, and from terrorist attacks that the governor and I know how to do that, and our staffs know how to do it because we've been tested, as have the people of New York and New Jersey been tested. And that's one of the things you saw in there this morning, that regular commuters left the safety of where they were standing to rush to the train to help first responders evacuate injured people off the train. This region has developed a resilience that is admired by the rest of the world because of the way we've been tested. And so um, we have challenges, as the governor said, and, and we both believe that. But we have a system in place between the two of us and our administrations and and incredibly resilient people that allow us to be able to confront these things very directly. So when we have more information to give, um, we'll hold another briefing, whether it's directly by the governor and I, or whether it's by um, our folks who are in charge of the minute to minute operations of this, we'll let you know. We appreciate you coming out today, informing the public, and we'll continue to provide information regarding the evening commute if there's anything to add to what uh, Commissioner Hammer and Chairman Prendergast already told you. So thank you all for coming today.